So we're just gonna continue the uh, preview for China National Games. We're just driving to the gym, so where do we leave off? Uh, so yeah, we finished our, re our, our preview of the 62 kilogram class. So now we're gonna move on to the 69 kilogram class. So looking at the start list, I mean, I think 69 kilo is traditionally one of the more stacked divisions. Yeah, you know, there's a number of Olympic champions and world champions in this class. So the first entry total that we're going to talk about is Shi Ziyang with an to entry total of 350. So I don't know if we've seen too much of him since the Rio Olympics. Yeah, for sure. We haven't seen him very much since Rio, but uh, if you look at his results from 2015, 2016, I think they speak for themselves, right? And he's the reigning Olympic champ. I think after some of those photos emerged, <laughs> his break. I think some people got a little bit worried about what kind of shape he would be in after uh, the Olympics, but I mean, even at China Nationals uh, earlier this year. Yeah, he looks really lean, so yeah, I think that's uh, pretty, I think he's back in shape. Uh, so second on the list is Wu Chao. Um, he's listed with a total entry total of 340, and it uh, looks like he's from Tianjin, so he has the home field advantage here, but once again, it's not a guy that we know too much about. He competed at the 2011. Uh, world Championships, and then since then, I mean, um, he's not really, he hasn't really emerged as one of those top 69 kilo lifters in the uh, really competitive field since then, it feels like. Yeah, in 69, like, for the longest time, there was, was somebody that definitely owned that division, and that's the person we're going to talk about next, so Liao Hui. Uh, he's from the Hubei province, he has an inch total of 340, so everyone knows that he won the Olympics in 2008. Uh, was supposed to go to the Olympics in 2016, but due to some internal procedures, uh, he wasn't allowed to go to the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, he's been dominant for such a long time, and then it seems like it's hasn't been his lifting that was ever, you know, his downfall during that time period where Shi Ziyong was able to um, kind of emerge. Yeah, for sure. Like, <clears throat> so even at 2016 um, China Nationals. He beat Xi Ziyong by two kilos, right? I think a kilo in each lift. Yeah. And um, Xi Ziyong was pretty happy about that, which is pretty interesting because she was saying that his goal for every competition is just to be within five kilos of Liao. So this will be a really interesting competition. Uh, at 2017 China Spring Nationals, we thought that Liao would put up a big total, but um, he struggled in the snatch, so he was only able to snatch 150s. Then he just did 171 in the clean and jerk just to qualify. So now the next guy, uh, Feng Ludong. Um, so this is also a lifter from the uh, Zhejiang province, which is the same place as uh, Shi Zhejiang. It's nice to see him always in the mix. Because actually, when I was in the Zhejiang province a few years ago, this is before. Um, this would have been in like 2013. I met Feng Ludong, uh, and the director of the weightlifting program was touting him as the next big thing at 69 kg. I think at that time his lifts were 160, 190. And there was not really any mention of Shi Ziyong. So it looks like Feng Ludong is one of those guys that has, you know, had a really rapid improvement, but then it seems like He's kind of plateaued right on that uh, cusp kind of margin lifts, whereas Shi Ziyong really just kind of leapfrogged over him. Yeah, I actually really like uh, the way that Feng Ludong lifts. He He's a really good snatcher. Um, I think he really struggles in the clean and jerk, but um, if he can win the snatch, I think that he'll be in good contention, at least on the podium. So the next guy, uh, Lin Chen Feng, He's the 2012 Olympic champion, entry total of 330. Not much to say about him in my opinion. I think that <coughs> he won the 2012 Olympics because Liao Hui got popped uh, in 2010. He's innocent, free Liao. Anyways, because Liao was supposed to go, but unfortunately couldn't. I don't know too much about this lifter. Um, to be honest, I mean, I think his resume kind of just speaks for itself. He is the Olympic champion from 2012, but in this competition we have three Olympic champions 20, uh, from 2008, 2012, and 2016. And I think among those 
he's probably the least favored in. Oh, absolutely. I think it was just really good timing for him when he won Olympics in 2012. Yeah, and I mean, even though he's not one of the, probably the, the uh, top contenders in this division, even to be among, you know, the top six at uh, the 69 category in China, obviously that's going to put you at near one of the top places in the world. Yeah, absolutely. So anyone uh, with like a 340 total in the 69 kilogram class um, can basically win worlds. Um, so the next guy that we have on here, Chao Ningbo, also known as the Under, Ar Under Armour undershirt guy. Yeah, so this guy excels, I would say, mostly in the snatch as well. He has like a really, really straight pull. Uh, I read somewhere, or I saw some video of one of the coaches saying that like, uh, he has one of the best snatches in China, and he's also one of the best soccer players in that province. <clears throat> Random. So with this guy, I mean, one of those guys that you see always consistently performing at the national level in China, but hasn't really had a, a breakthrough performance yet. But I think with a lot of the other lifters who definitely have to manage their um, kind of competition schedule and peaking for more international meets rather than uh, national meets, I think this is one of the guys who may be able to uh, continue making you know, uh, steady progress because he's not having to peak for all these international meets and at a competition like this uh, might put more emphasis than one of the uh, top contenders, for example. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, he doesn't have as many international competitions to peak for. I don't know if... I can't remember the last international competition he went to, but yeah, uh, he can make China National Games or China Nationals his main priority, whereas guys like Liao and Xi, uh, I think they know that they have to win to go, but there's less pressure on them because there's a high likelihood that they're going to go. So who do you think is the favorited lifter uh, to win this competition? So I think the favorited lifter is honestly sh probably she, but I want Liao to win. I'm a big believer in comebacks, and I think that he can come back and go to 2020. But uh, Larry, you said that you noticed that he lost kind of quite a bit of weight. Looking at some of the um, the videos that have come out, if you compare back to his like 2015 and 2016 um, appearance, I mean, it just doesn't look um, to be as big, but it's really tough to say because all we're seeing is some... Random videos. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. like very little video footage. Yeah. And I think uh, his lifts... I don't know. It, it, the lifts that he hit at uh, the 2017 Nationals, they were not his best performance lifts, but they're still, you know, just within a few percentage um, of those lifts. So he's obviously in good shape. Yeah, I think that's... Um, <clears throat> so I think Liao can totally come back just because he, he's a natural winner. I don't think he's ever lost in international competition, but he has had problems, I guess, in national competitions in China a couple times. I think he bombed out in his snatch in 2015, and that's why she went to Houston Worlds. But we know he has a huge reserve in the clean and jerk and world record snatch. She's the only person that holds all three world records in the men's divisions. So I think that says a lot about him. I think the one thing that we have to consider is his age. I mean, he is the 2008 Beijing uh, uh, Olympic champion. Um, but I guess the other thing is that since he did have those kind of forced layoff periods, that maybe that will actually contribute to some more longevity. So it'll be interesting. Cool. Um, so who do you think your favorite is to win? Um, I would say that the favorite would still have to be Sh uh, Shi Zhiyong. Yeah. I mean, as far as his recent um, performances, he's the one who's stood out the or he's the one who's performed the best. Um, plus, he's a good guy when he's not trying to steal my wife. <laughs> For 77 kilo weight class, top two entry totals, we don't know much too much about Cao Shi Jiaqi, um, but he's in at 360. 
We did 354 at the uh, Olympic trials last year, but that's kind of all we know. Do you know anything else, Mike? No, I've actually never heard of him before. It'll be interesting, actually, what he does, because uh, right now in China, we know that the 77 kilo glass is dominated by the next guy with the same entry total of 360. It's uh, Liu Xiaojun. So his entry total is 360 if he's capable of totaling over 375. Uh, so that would be a 175 snatch and a 200 kilo clean and jerk. Um, is there anything else we know about Lou? I mean, at this point, they're not really releasing too much footage. Um, we've been hearing about Lou possibly retiring of this competition. Yeah, that's actually really interesting because they said that um, once Liao said he's coming back and trying to go for 2020, uh, Lou said that he would try to go to 2020 with his bro. So we'll yeah. see what happens. But then also, I remember there was that interview where Lou um, mentioned when he was considering retiring that his wife, who was also a former weightlifter, asked him, well, is there anyone who's going to be as good as you that could replace you? And Lou basically said that even though he's probably considered part of the old guard as far as um, the Chinese national team is concerned, there's still not really any up-and-comers that at this time are or at that time, I should say, are ready to take his place. So he said that he would keep on lifting until uh, someone would be able to fill that void. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the things, uh, one glaring name that's missing from this entry list is Su Ying. Yeah. And a lot of people in 2015 thought that he would be uh, the lifter that would potentially step up and, and take Lu's place. But yeah. In 2015, uh, at China Nationals, he totaled 370 and beat Lu on body weight. And he ended up going to 2015 Worlds in Houston. Uh, unfortunately, he was suffering some back injuries. And when he was in Houston, I think Larry, you talked to him and he said that he hurt his back. Um, from my conversation with him, he, he had a minor back injury just during training camp leading up to Worlds. But actually in a uh, non-weightlifting um, kind of accident, I think he said he was stepping off the bus. He thought that he had another minor injury to his back um, or just aggravated his pre-existing injury. And I think that kind of explains the discrepancy between his results at uh, at the preceding Chinese Nationals versus the World Championships at that. In kind of a interesting turn of events, one of our correspondents uh, was able to contact Su Ying and he led us to believe that he is retiring from weightlifting. And he never said, he didn't uh, clarify if this is going to be something that's permanent or something that's temporary, but he did attribute this decision to his uh, long-standing injuries. He didn't clarify if it was in fact the back injury that led to this decision, but for the time being, it seems that he's actually retired. Yeah, and that's too bad because I think he was one of the smoothest Chinese lifters as well. So moving down the list, there are a number of entry totals at 350. We can just talk about the lifters that um, have been seen to compete internationally um, and have, might already have a bit more exposure. So. First, we can start with Zhong Guoshun. Now, this is a guy that, interesting, a lot of people don't seem to remember, but if you watched the 2014 uh, World Weightlifting Championships, he appeared to have gotten second place after um, Daniel uh, Godelli from Albania, but once the drug testing results came back and Daniel was stripped of his uh, medals, Zhong Guoshun was actually the 2014 uh, 77 kilo world champion. Interesting. Um, the next guy we have on our list is Yuan Shengfei. So some of you guys probably remember him from being a 69 kilo lifter. So he's the uh, youngster that I guess squat jerks and has the Olympic rings tattooed on his chest. And he also has kind of a tribal tattoo on his arm. Uh, some of you may know that the tribal tattoo actually represents a form of protection. So he previously suffered some injuries. Unfortunately, injured it again in a, as his last in his last competition as a 69 kilo lifter. I'm not sure when that happened, but he recently moved up to 77, and he's had some favorable results. So he snatched 160 and clean and jerked 195 at I think the Asian Championships. So. That's pretty significant, and uh, a lot of Chinese coaches are a big fan of this lifter because he's very explosive. Yeah, and um, 
even just like looking at his body type, he is obviously very well built for weightlifting and particularly squat jerks. Um, and he is one of the younger lifters um, at the top of this start list, so it'll be interesting to see how this weight gain, uh, now that he's kind of had a bit of a chance to settle into the new weight class, uh, if we see a big jump in those numbers. Jim? So, um, another lifter that's listed at um, 350 entry total is Tan Jian. So this is a guy who's from Hunan province, and also I think it was last year that he moved up from 69 kg to 77. Okay. And you might recognize him from the University World Championships. Um, I think it would have been last year as well. But, um... We've only seen him compete at 77 kilo a handful of times. Last year at the Olympic trials, he did have um, a pretty good showing and he placed second place uh, after Lu Xiaojun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty significant. And uh, at that time, he did 163 uh, and 200. So, well, I mean, that's going to be a good placement no matter who you're going up against. Or that's going to put you in good rankings no matter who you're going up against. Yeah, absolutely. So who do you think uh, are the, is the favorite in this weight class? I think the favorite is pretty obvious. It's uh, Lou. Uh, nobody is going to snatch more than him. Obviously, he has the world record of 177 snatch where he set that uh, in Rio. Uh, he kind of tends to struggle in the clean and jerk, but I think since he'll be at home, he'll be able to clean and jerk at least 200, so I don't think there's too much competition. But if you had to pick somebody else to win, and we know that it might be his last competition, the other lifters might be a little bit more motivated, because if China does end up going to Worlds, and if it's his last comp, it's not going to be him. Yeah. Um, as far as a potential upset, I mean, barring like, critical errors from Liu Xiaojing, I think the one guy that has uh, potential to upset him is Yuan Chenfei. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is because he's already been hitting um, world-class numbers at 69, and we haven't seen him compete too much at 77, so I think that he did have a lot of room to progress. And even just from the uh, increase in body weight standpoint, I don't think that he's um, shown us his full potential there. So. I think that he might have a breakthrough performance uh, at this competition. Yeah, I hope to see him put up big numbers just because China is waiting for a new 77 kilo to take the reins. Um, this might be Lu's opportunity to move out and Yuan's opportunity to go to the top. And hopefully he can get to the 2020 Olympics. Or yeah. else he might have to get a bit of a cover up on that. <laughs> yeah, laser, laser tattoo removal. So moving on to the 85 kilogram weight class. Uh, the favorite, in my opinion, is obviously Tian Tao, and he has the highest entry total of 370. So we know he's definitely capable of having a 395 kilo total. So that would be 175 kilogram snatch, 220 clean and jerk. And I think that's what he did at 2016 China Nationals. Like Liu has some consistency issues in the clean and jerk, but I don't think that'll be a problem. So recently, he switched from a squat jerk to a power jerk, and it looks a lot more consistent. So recently, there's also been videos of him clean and jerking, or power cleaning 200 and power jerking it like it was nothing. So hopefully he's able to show up. Uh, Tanto is another one of the lifters who's on UJ's team. Last year before the Olympics, UJ uh, was kind of discussing a bit of a change in competition strategy with some of the uh, squat jerkers, and one of the things that he seems to think might improve their competition performances is actually increasing the um, the weight jumps that they take between attempts. So I feel like Tian uh, in this competition, I mean, he doesn't really have a lot of competition on paper. So we might see him open pretty light, but uh, take some big jumps and hopefully can show us a, a big clean and jerk. Yeah, obviously this guy's capable of uh, clean and jerking a new world record. Well, there's videos of him actually cleaning 230 like it's nothing, uh, and obviously he misses the jerk. I think going into 2020, this is the guy to watch in the 85 kilogram class, and he's still super young. Now, looking at the rest of the start list, um, not really many too big names. The only other name that 
I recognize actually is uh, Swimway, who's also listed at 370. I remember meeting him at the National Training Center um, in 2014, and he's a very humble guy. He's from uh, Hunan province, and he was training there um, just temporarily because one of his coaches uh, was there um, in preparation for the Asian Games that year. And, um, you know, very workmanlike. He puts in a lot, a lot of uh, additional work and um, technique work and always stayed a little bit longer than um, some of the national team lifters so this is a guy that has a hard work ethic and I think that um, we can expect to see some competitive numbers from him but as far as being in contention I don't think there's anyone in China at this time that has shown any um, real promise to upsetting Tian Tao yeah he's on a new level Um, and then for the rest of the weight classes, 94, 105, 105 plus, I mean, I don't think anyone's watching this competition for those categories. Yeah, like China is not really dominant in those weight categories. There's a couple lifters, but uh, we're not really going to talk about them. So that's all we have for the preview segments here. I know the 56 and 62 kilo weight classes already competed, but... We'll do kind of a review of all the men's sessions once it's all uh, once it's all done. If you have any questions, just leave some comments. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.